Hey everybody, today I want to share with you how to get started making a game and take you through my game development journey so far. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refine your skills, I hope my experiences can provide some valuable insights. So let's jump in. My journey with game development began a few years ago when I started learning Unreal Engine on my own. I was immediately drawn to it and couldn't wait to start designing levels. The first asset pack I bought was a landscape pack with custom mountain brushes. It was amazing how easy it was to create unique mountains with just one click. I was hooked. With that excitement, I jumped into developing an action RPG called Spire. I spent countless hours watching YouTube tutorials trying to piece together a complete game. Unfortunately, this resulted in a messy, unoptimized project that I eventually had to abandon. But I didn't give up on the idea of Spire. Realizing I needed more of a structured approach, I took a Udemy course on game development. I only finished the first part, which was enough to teach me how to make a physics-based marble game. This course provided me with a solid foundation, and I was able to understand and manipulate the game more effectively. I found joy in creating this small game, which I eventually published on Steam as The Virus. After publishing The Virus, I immediately started working on a more complex project called Henry's Day. This adventure game required new elements and skills I hadn't learned yet. Luckily, I discovered a dialogue plugin system that allowed me to customize it, which essentially acted as my quest, dialogue, and inventory system for my game. With this solid foundation, my game development progress accelerated, and within a year, I published Henry's Day. Marketing Henry's Day was a huge learning experience for me. I posted on Twitter, recorded devlogs for YouTube, and included my game in several festivals, including Steam Next Fest. While I got initial wish lists from fellow indie devs, I learned that genuine interest came from the festivals. Those were the people who were genuinely interested in purchasing upcoming games on Steam. Feeling more confident, I decided to revisit Spire. With more experience, I made significant progress but struggled with creating a fluid and responsive combat system. I hired someone to help, but managing and building upon their work proved challenging. Despite finding workarounds, the system felt unstable and I decided to take another break from Spire. Taking a step back, I chose to work on a smaller project using the dialogue plugin system that I had used for Henry's Day. This decision reignited my inspiration and I began crafting a new game, adding various elements like followers, bosses, and side quests. Finding consistent art assets was a challenge, but I managed to create a cohesive world. I'm excited to announce that my new game, Realm of the Everbound, is set to be released this July. Please consider wishlisting my game, as it does help tremendously with my exposure on Steam. Now let's talk about some key takeaways and advice for aspiring game developers. One of the most important lessons I've learned is the significance of having a solid foundation for your game. Think of it like building a house. You might have beautiful framing and walls, but if the foundation is weak, the house won't withstand a storm. In game development, the storm can represent the challenges and obstacles you'll inevitably face, such as bugs, technical issues, and design changes. Finding a foundation that you understand and can build upon should be your first step in developing a game. For example, in an adventure game, the foundation might be the quest system. This system is important to the game as almost every other aspect like the dialogue, inventory, and progression systems are tied to it. If your quest system is solid, you can build and expand upon your game with confidence. When I started with Spire, I didn't have a clear foundation. I was trying to build everything at once, which led to a lot of instability. But when I worked on Henry's Day, I found that the dialogue plugin proved as a strong base. It allowed me to integrate other elements smoothly and kept my development process organized and efficient. So my advice is to start small and focus on creating a strong foundation. This could be a basic gameplay mechanic, like a simple quest system, or even a core feature that defines your game. Once you have that, you can gradually add more complexity and polish. Remember, building a game should be fun and rewarding, even when you encounter obstacles. If you find yourself constantly stuck and frustrated, it might be a sign that your project is too ambitious for your current skill level. Take a step back, reassess, and perhaps scale down to something more manageable. Thanks for watching my video. I hope my experiences can inspire you and help you on your own game development journey. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like or hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you later.